Myanmar so maybe I, I need to turn off the uh, translation first. So you should see a little button on the bottom of your screen for interpretation. And if you click on that and then switch it to off, then you won't hear his translation anymore. Can you still hear me? Okay. Uh, so today I will uh, uh, introduce the process uh, how we discovered the, the Skywalker given in China and uh, what, what we have done for the conservation of the species. The Skywalker given a job as your there were two species of uh hulok gibbons. One is the eastern hulok, the, and the, the other one is the western hulok. So the left one, the left photo is the eastern, uh, is the male of eastern hulok, and then the uh. The, the right photo is the uh, uh, Western hulok. From these photos, we can see the uh, differences. The so the, the, the Eastern hulok has a uh, white beard and uh, the white brow are well separated. But uh, Western hulok, even uh, uh, they don't have white beard, beard and uh, the white brows uh, Western Majaro, so this, uh, I'll show you more this, photos of Eastern Hulok. From these photos, the we can clearly see the uh, white beard and uh, the, some, the, uh, some, the, some white hairs in, uh, 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 around the, the eyes and nose. So on the white the brows are all separated. So, especially another uh, distinguished characteristics of uh, Eastern Hulok is the uh, uh, white Hulok given uh, So we can uh, see from these two photos. So, this is a map to show the uh, uh, distribution boundary of these two species. Uh, before the we saw uh, the Chindun River Shire. in Myanmar separates these two species. On the, the west Mata bank of the river, uh, the it's the range of Western Hulok. And uh, on the east bank of the Chindun River and uh, the uh, Euro Adi River, the species is Eastern Hulok. So, uh, this is this is China, so you you can say because uh, this yeah. area is in the east bank of of Chindun River. So in the past, Chindu we thought yeah. the Hulok Shibai given population yeah. so, in China yeah. uh, was Eastern Hulok. The Eastern Hulok is here, yeah. But I I started to study Hulok Gibbons in uh, in in China in uh, in two thousand. Seven. So at the, the beginning of my own project, we tried to hatch a few Gibbon groups so we can uh, collect behavior data and then design conservation plan for species. But after we have hatched several, uh, a few groups, we, we got many opportunities to take pictures of these animals. So from this photos, you can see these gibbons look different from the typical eastern hulogs because we can't see any white beard and uh, there are no white, white hairs around the eyes in the orbit area. So from these two photos, we can also clearly see the tuft is not white, actually is brown or black, uh, the same color as the, as the body. So, I 
I think maybe this species is different from the eastern hulok. We, uh, we try to, uh, to pin, uh, take pictures of as many as in, uh, as many individuals as we can. So we uh, we we went to different uh, forest patches to survey gibbons, and we took photos of them. And we also visited several Chinese to uh, to to take pictures of captive individuals. But you know, it it was very difficult to take pictures of wild and captured gibbons because they were always uh flee away once they detect you know, of the effort. So after several years we, uh, we, always, we finally got pictures of uh, a few males and uh, females. We can see from this uh, photos we can see yeah no white beard no white hairs around no uh, uh, white bronze uh, even separated uh even wider than the eastern hulok eastern hulok yeah this photos show the tuft of the mills so we can see the tuft of uh, and uh, we also found some morphological differences between hollow gibbons in the mountain Gaoligong and the uh, typical eastern hollows. Eastern These photos on the top are hollow gibbons from mountain Gaoligong. So we can see the white, white hairs around the eyes and in the orbit area and this uh, obvious in the eastern hulok. So the, the bottom photos are a typical eastern hulok. We can see they have, they have many dense white hairs around the eyes that create a, a white mask. On the face. Uh, 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 so, so we uh, we thought maybe the, the hulog gibbon population in mountain Dolgong is a different species from eastern hulog. So we are uh, 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 measured the morphometrics of molars of uh, specimens. And we also study the uh, studied uh, the mitochondrial genome the of different genome DNA uh, individuals. Like so we have two uh, mitochondrial genome for Hello. I think he may have lost his connection. Yeah, the fan lost the connection. Okay, well, we'll try to give him a, a, a few minutes to hopefully be able to rejoin. Is now. Uh, sorry, my, my collection is not very well. And, uh, uh, Glad you could rejoin. Yeah, we're all ready <laughs> for you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so now we have both uh, morphological uh, morphological and genetic evidences to support a new species 
Uh, 有应该没有。So、uh, DNA, we, we, we named this species as a hulok tianxin. Tianxin actually is a, uh, is a pinyin in China. It, uh, one, one moment, if, if you're able to press the, the share screen again, I think you may need to reshare your screen. Oh, okay. Thank you. So can you see my screen now? Not quite. Um, it's the green green button at the bottom. I, I can't see the, the can you see it? Ah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, it's okay. in presenter mode. Great. Thank you. So, so I will start from this slide. Uh, do you uh, do you do you get an idea from this slide the genetic uh, differences between uh, Eastern Hulok and uh, the, the population mountain Hulok? So actually, from this uh, from this figure, we can see the eastern Hulok, uh, eastern Hulok, uh, western Hulok, and the Gauligong, the, the Hulok given population in Gauligong is different. So uh, we decided to name it as a new species. And uh, after discussion between uh, authors, we, we decided to name it as Hulok Tianxin. Tianxin is pin in China. Uh, which depict the uh, uh, that means uh, skywalk in, in Chinese. So, uh, uh, that depicts the, 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 the cruise mode of the game, the, just the, like uh, walking on sky. So, here yeah, I would like to show you uh, uh, more photos to uh, distinguish uh, this uh, four different uh, taxa uh, of holo given. Yeah, this uh, is the western holo given, and this is uh, uh, Miss Mianzis uh, from, from uh, Miss Mountain. Allow uh, uh, a recent paper. Uh, reported this subspecies is not valid. So actually this is a population of Western Hulok. And this is Eastern Hulok. Eastern and this Hulok, uh, Hulok tension from Mountain Gauligong. In the Mount Gauligong, the Skywalker given it. So uh, this is a holotype of Hulok tension uh, which is uh, preserved in American Museum of Natural American History. American Museum of Natural uh, History, ma, the thing I account you know. Uh, this specimen was collected by Roy Chapman in this, April five. The account uh, you know, uh, more than one hundred years ago in Mount Gaurung. So from this uh, hilo, uh, holotype, so we can see. The sample, uh, yeah, the, the bottom photos are uh, the uh, type specimen. The holotype of uh, Hulok Nucleides, the Eastern Hulok species. Yeah, so, Eastern Hulok, uh, we can yeah. see uh, the, the Hulok tension doesn't have white hairs in the orbital area. 
ยังไม่ได้ปล่อยเงินเจมาส่งเงินเจมาส่งเงินเจมาปล่อยเงินเจมาปล่อยเงินเจมาปล่อยเงินเจมาปล่อยเงินเจมาปล่อยเงินเจ
ตัวเนี่ยมาโลว่าชื่อเจ้าเนี่ยมาโลว่าเนี่ยเจ้าเนี่ยมาโลว่าเนี่ยเจ้าเนี่ยมาโลว่าเนี่ยเจ้าเน
of holograms in China. And uh, we, we just confirmed the existence of 34 groups and 10 uh, solitary individuals uh, in, in China. Group. So we can say this, uh, the mass population of holograms in China was clearly isolated in several different uh, areas. So the first subpopulation lived inside the Gaoligong National Nature Reserve, which is shown in green in this uh, figure. So this is the first population, and this is the second population. And this is the third population. So we can say they, 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 they are isolated by more than 40 kilometers. And uh, in the middle of nature, there is a ridge of mountain Gaoligong, uh, higher above uh, than 3,000 meters. So the Gibbons can't cross the ridge from the east ridge to the west ridge. And, the and this population is outside the nature itself. So since 2009, uh, we tried to study Gibbon behavior in three different field sites. Uh, and finally, we habituated two given groups. We studied the habitat, the singing behavior, feeding behavior, ranging behavior, and sleeping behavior. So, uh, we also monitored the climate and the food availability uh, in, in two, two sites. So, we can see. There's remarkable seasonal variation in temperature and uh, for the availability in our study sites. So in, so, uh, in, in do... winter, in, uh, yeah. in cold winters yeah. from yeah. December yeah. To, to January to uh, February, we can see December, sometimes February, uh, is on the lowest right? temperature in our study site drops Below zero, and the uh, occasionally so, our study site uh, is covered by snow. So that means gibbons uh, live in the forest with, with snow. And during the cold winters, for three months, there was nearly no any fruits available for for gibbons. So which means gibbons need to face both cold and uh, uh, fruit shortage the, for nearly three months at the, our study site. So, so we, uh, we, we set up 33, 20 by 20 meter floors at Nanka, where cardamom plantation is common. And uh, we set up around 50 floors at Nanka, where cardamom is red. So uh, from the uh, habitat survey results, we see cardamom plantation didn't reduce tree diversity. We recorded 102 tree species and uh, 16 yellow species at Nankang compared to 108 tree species and uh, 17 yellow species at Banchang. But the forest structure were changed by cardamom uh, plantation. So at Nankang, we can see the Cornish trees were reduced. But in the second layer, from 10 to 20 meters high, the trees from 10, 10 to 20 meters high. So we become uh, more common at Nankang. So, <laughs> we, we also uh, monitor the same behavior of four groups over five years. And the, we, we found the, 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 this given is called much less than other given populations. On average, they just call 
for my average time, I join any or even ten days. But they, but they call longer than other given species. On average, they call twenty-five meters. That's a number they love there. About the and they they some nest in cold months and yeah, when they had gum shorts or dog the, body. So uh, one of our study groups didn't call for 62 days after they had gun shots. We, we thought maybe this, this group's uh, all members in this group were hunted by, by hunters. But after 62 days, this group Call again, and uh, we 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 found them. Group the group, so so if you, uh, if you go to a forest to do a game survey, you need to consider the hunting pressure in the study site. Uh, in in areas with very high hunting pressure, gibbons may call less often. So and we, we, uh, after hydration, we, we, we started the uh, feeding behavior of these groups. And, uh, but right now, I have not yet analyzed the feeding behavior data of the group at uh, Banchang. So this, uh, here I show you the, the results uh, of the Nankang group. This group, group consume uh, leaves or fruits from 66 different species. And only 60, 60, 66, uh, 36 species provide figure or fruit for gibbons. So, and when fruit was not available, they consumed uh, more leaves uh, and increased the feeding time. Uh, when the temperature was, very, uh, was low in cold winters, they also increased resting and decreased travel. Some, some days, when the temperature was really low, they left the sleeping trees at 10, 10 p.m. And, uh, Came back to uh, sleep trace in the uh, in in three p.m. in the afternoon. So that means they just uh, uh, forage for four to five hours and uh, travel around three hundred meters. So. This is a ranging pattern of the, the, the group at Nankang. The annual the group, range was group uh, 93 hectares for, for this group. And the, the Banchang group occupied the uh, Nakia uh, home range. It was uh, 160 hectares. On average, they travel, uh, they travel 1,200 meters per day. So, as I just told, some days they just, they, they just travel 350 meters, but when fruit was abundant, they, they moved a longer distance to, to forage food. So we also compared the, uh, the behavior of our two study groups uh, that live in forests with or without cardamom plantation. So from these figures, we can see the group live in the cardamom forest increased feeding time and they consume much more leaves than the group in the forest without cardamom. And the, the, the group living in the, in the cardamom forest also decreased traveling in June, July, and August. So 
because in, uh, in the area well preserved uh, forests at the Banchang site. There were more fruit available to givens in these three months. So the Banchang group traveled longer than the Nankang group. So we also studied the uh, sleeping behavior and uh, we published two papers uh, on this topic. Uh, one is uh, one, yeah, one in uh, International Journal of Primatology and uh, Interpretation one in and regulation. Primatology. Because this uh, is not very, uh, it's not close related to conversion issues. So uh, I, I won't go to details of the sleeping behavior. If you are interested, uh, I can see the this, uh, about the But uh, I was, we, we, uh, we found that the, uh, the Nankan group that live in the Kalmon for, uh, forest, they have, uh, they, their sleeping trees are short than the uh, 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 sleeping trees of the Banchang So, that means uh, cardamom, cardamom plantation also uh, pose a negative effect on, on the sleeping behavior of gibbons. So, so let's take a show now. I have to quality evaluation of the whole uh, population in China, so the the darker the, the patch is, uh, the best quality uh, for for given groups. So we can see this. There are four different populations isolated by more than ten kilometers. So this. Circle, the, the big circle is 10 kilometers, the radius of 10 kilometers, the small circle is, uh, is uh, 5 kilometers, and the radius of the smaller circle is 5 kilometers, so we can see there are four different uh, small subpopulations and even so, I, I want to show you more details of the, the, the population outside the nature of. But you can see the, the, uh, this the black triangles group, uh? are villages in the area. So, we can see even for this uh, subpopulation, the Gibbon groups are also. Isolated by rivers, veins. So if these two groups disappear, this population will be separated to two populations. So we allow uh, doing some conservation education along this uh, along the, the China Myanmar international border in this area. So, in uh, during the 2017 population survey, we uh, conducted population survey interview surveys in these areas. So, we tried to, to connect the information about the the life food, uh, attitude, perception of local people to givens. So we classified yeah, our studies uh, area into four different types. Uh, the first area, this A, A means given populations living uh, outside the nature of area B is the populations live inside Nature of RSC is no givens uh, outside the, the nature of the, B is no givens but inside the nature of so the, we the, try the, to the, interview uh, six uh, people per the, minute the, in total the, we are the, interviewed the, more than 600 the, local villages from the, the, around the, 100 uh, villages 
So this, this, is, uh, uh, this is our, uh, this are our results. So we can see the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. there are more these two people compared to B and A C. So in this so, way, yeah. and then uh, there's Han people living area A. In area A, the yeah, majority yeah, of yeah, local people yeah, grow cardamom in the forest, and then they also collected. Mountain the, the uh, forest products from the from the from the forest. Yeah, the, yeah, right. But with so in in not to grow cardamom inside the forest. So the local people in area A they preserve forest close to the village. So the forest cover in area A is even higher than the inside or close to the nature zone. And uh, in area A, the local people don't hunt humans because of a traditional hunting taboo, because this needs to people beneath a uh, given they have many different uh, stories of gibbons, and they believe some some of local people believe uh, gibbon is the uh, ancestor of of Nisu people, or gibbon is a god of all animals because they never go to uh, drink water in the in the river. Is other uh, them with with water, and others said gibbons can predict can forecast weather so, and the others said uh, uh given thing is uh is very beautiful with icon. so uh, this so, area is far away from Chang Chang and uh, more needs to people and fewer Han people live in this area and they have a tradition uh, or culture not to hunt gibbons. So those ma, so, the Lizui ma, the Gibbonio, uh, name like po, due to the, the uh, traditional hunting taboos. So, gibbons still survive the Lizui collective forest. Uh, Gibbonia, in Arabic, this forest. Is protected by by Chinese law because this is uh, a nature zone. So due to uh, law enforcement, both forests and gibbons are protected inside the nature zone. In nature zone. So the study shows how traditional ecological knowledge can contribute to endangered species. Conservation. So during, during your uh, own survey, maybe you can also collect some data about local people's uh, traditional or local ecological knowledge. So uh, in 2015, we uh, created uh, a small NGO. A small and local NGO is my, my, my friends. Uh, we use a, uh, uh, the, the Skywalk Hulu given as a logo Skywalk of our uh, NGO. Uh, and the, the, the aim of this NGO is to conserve the, uh, the, the Skywalk Hulu given and the habitat to in China. China. The English name of this NGO is Cloud Mountain Conservation. Yeah, yeah, this is the logo uh, of our NGO. And uh, Last year, we uh, uh, we filled a, a natural documentary about the documentary Skywalk Hulu Gibbons. Yeah, so if you are interested, you can you, maybe you can find it on the internet. Uh, the, the English name of this uh, documentary is a song for love, an ape with a ape. So in this documentary. Uh, we introduced the, the ecology and behavior of hologibbons 
We also focus on the innovation of the species we introduced. Given the agile, do the stress, the whole given population in China are facing, and we we try to use the app to attract humans to uh disperse in the forest. And uh, we also did uh, many outreach and uh, education in uh, primary outreach schools, program, uh, in middle schools, and uh, uh, and every year we we, we, we did some outreach in in different city zoos, uh, in uh, International Shaven Day. These photos were taken two years ago when we did outreach in Beijing Zoo. Yeah. So, and that's all. Thank you very much.